and I'll be reading you the right word. Roger and his thesaurus by Jen Bryan and Melissa Sweet. This book has beautiful pictures, and there's so much going on in this picture because a thesaurus has pictures, and it tells you more information than a dictionary. At the back, it says, If only all the ideas in the world could be found in one place, then everyone would have one book where they could, fi could find the best word, the one that really fits. Peter carried this idea with him like a secret treasure. So this book sounds very interesting from the back, but let's read it from the inside. The man is not wholly evil. He has a thesaurus in his cabin. So it says here, J. M. Barry, author Peter Pan, describing the character Captain Hook. For, uh, for those of you, many of you, who watched Peter Pan, you would know who Captain Hook is. So up here it says, he was born in 1779 and he died in 1869. And I like this place where it tells you when he was a toddler, to a child, to a teenager, to a handsome young man, and an old man. I love this picture because of all the forest and the trees. And as I said, this book has beautiful pictures. And there's a little crescent here. And I'm not sure if these are mushrooms or tubas. <sighs> Peter snuggled deeper into Uncle's lamp as the carriage clattered through the valleys of Switzerland. Man. Baby Annette slept in Mother's arms, a small pink blossom against a wall of black. Father wasn't coming back, Peter knew. Mother's dark dress and uncle's sadness proved it. So she's wearing a dark dress, and there's the uncle holding Peter. Year later, when Peter began his lists, father's death came first. Aww, so sad. And they're playing with her little sister. His little sister. Peter's family moved often, so making friends was difficult. But, Peter, but books, Peter discovered, were also good friends. There were always p plenty of them around, and he never had to leave them behind. When he was eight, he started to write his own on the cover. He wrote Peter Marc Roger, his book. But instead of writing stories, he wrote lists. At first, he made a list of the Latin words he'd learned from his tutor. Next to it, he wrote their English meanings. So he made a list up here, and one side is Latin, and one side is English. And for example, in Latin, you say Leo, and in English, you say a lion. And then in Latin, you say Tigris, and in English, you say a tiger. The lists helped him remember his lessons. They also gave him something to do when Mother prepared him with questions. So they're having a conversation, and he said, fine. He said, Mama, I'm fine. And this is underlined word. Although, to be honest, Peter thought fine wasn't quite the right word. So fine, you can say in other ways. You can say glad, cheerful, well, good, very well, dandy. Every year, Peter added new lists to his book. Some of his favorites were the four elements or the weather and in the garden. His mother complained that Peter was always scribbling. So these are the four elements. So these are the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. And he made a different list like lists of shape, lists of things that are green, lists of things that are in the garden, lists of things that can fly. But Peter's word lists were not just scribbles. Words, Peter learned, were powerful things. And when he put them in long, neat rows, he felt as if the world itself clicked into order. Teenage Peter was tall, thin, and very shy. He spent hours reading science books. He Books. He especially liked one written by Linnaeus, a man who made lists just like Peter did. 
Linnaeus put the names of animals and plants in categories, and that made nature more much easier to read. And here's his journal, and he made different lists like kingdom, class, order, families, genius, species. Just as Linnaeus had wandered through his garden in Sweden, Peter wandered through the London parks, making lists of all the plants and insects. So now we learn of something new that Linnaeus, he lived in Sweden, so his favorite. He preferred to wander alone. But mother didn't approve. Perhaps worry wasn't the right, the quite right word. What was the right word? Peter began a new list. So he said, Mama, don't worry. And now there are different ways you can say worry. Fret, grieve, despair, annoy, enough, to drive one, mad. How wonderful it felt to find just the right word. If only all ideas in the world could be found in one place, then everyone would have one book where they could find the best word, the one that really fit. Oh, this is the same thing at the back we read. Peter carried this idea with him like a secret treasure, universe, light, pleasure. In 1793, way back from the First World War, I learned that at school in science, the Rogers moved to Edinburgh, Scotland, where Peter entered medical school. For the next five years, Peter studied hard. He was only 19 when he graduated. His uncle warned him that he was too young to become a doctor. No one will take you seriously. What could he do in the meantime? <clears throat> he could teach math, science, my favorite, and French. He could tutor. Then he met a wealthy man with two teenage sons. In Paris, Peter and the boys were never short of things to do or places to go. They even saw Napoleon lead his troops to the city. The soldiers marked locksteps in long, orderly, orderly rows, just like the lists in Peter's book. Finally, Peter was old enough to be a doctor. His first job was in Manchester, England. The people who worked in the factories, they were poor and often sick, often sick. Oh, they're so poor, and he isn't even with crouches. Peter tried his best to keep them healthy. At night, he worked on his list. So he's helping a little girl with her neck. In 1805, even my mother wasn't born. Peter finished his first book, big book of word lists. It, hadn't, it had about 100 pages, 1,000 ideas, and listed more than 15,000 words. That's the biggest book I've ever heard. He kept it on his desk so that he could find just the right word whenever he needed it. So this is a little list in other books. He says collections, English synonyms, synonyms, classified and arranged. When Peter moved back to London, he joined science societies, royal society, societies and attended lectures given by famous thinkers and inventors. Before long, he was asked to give lectures too. Lectures. But could he do it? Could shy Peter Roger face a crowded room and talk about what he knew? Now he's famous and a famous writer and a doctor. Yes, he could. With his book in hand, Peter spoke concisely with clarity and conviction. So now he's giving a lecture to all of the other writers, and they're all talking. When he was 45 years old, Peter married Mary Hobson. She was cheerful, smart, and pretty. She made Peter laugh. They had a daughter, Kate, and a son, John. So she would she was Kate was born in 1825 and 1828 daughter son child 
Peter remained naturally shy, but now he had many friends. As he grew older, Peter spent less time visiting patients. He, he would always be Dr. Roger, but now he played chess, took walks, and read books, and of course, he worked on his lists. So these are other few words, any, any other way you can say marriage, like husband, wife, honor, family, mother, father. By the time a few other, by this time a few other writers had published their own word lists. These books helped people to speak and to write more politely. Peter read them all. Kate and John read them too. They thought their father's book was much better. Peter agreed. Papa, the book you wrote is much better than these. For the next three years, he worked on the book of word lists. Then he, then that he'd written as a young doctor. He made it larger, more organized, and easier to read. Long ago, oh, easier to use. Sorry. Long ago, Peter had discovered the power of words. Now he believed that everyone should have their this this power. Everyone should be able to find the right word whenever they need it. Darkness, night, gloom, dusk. In 1852, Roger published his thesaurus, a word that means treasure house in Greek. What's Greek doing in this book? People snatch it from the shelves like a new kind of candy. Like they're acting like kids. The first thousand copies sold out quickly. Uh, one thing I like about this book is the illustrations. It looks like it's a newspaper. So that's one thing. And you can see the words everywhere. Like on the rooftops and on the walls. And everywhere. Peter was suddenly a popular author. But this did not change him at all. For those of you who are wondering what an author is, it's the same thing as a writer. Change him at all. Instead, he went right back to his desk and made new lists. So that today, whenever you need it, you can still find the right word. The end. And this is how the source looks like. And I hope you enjoy this book. And please be subscribe, and please be sure to subscribe and comment, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.